Thunderstorms are pretty scary stuff, smiting down lightning of up to 28,000 degrees from clouds onto the ground seemingly out of nowhere. So unsurprisingly, there is a lot of science between the buildup of those clouds to the sound of thunder we hear. In this video, we will go over how thunder clouds are formed, how static electricity is built up inside, and how lightning strikes. Thunder clouds, also known as cumulonimbus clouds, are grown from small cumulus clouds, which are the common fluffy clouds we see with flat bottoms. In order for thunder clouds to form, we need tons of moisture, warmth, and air movement, hence why thunderstorms are common in the warmer summer and autumn month. As the sun heats up the moist air on the surface, the warmer air rises and starts to create an upward flow of air, or an updraft. As the air rises high enough, water vapors inside start to condense as it is colder the higher up we go, and form tiny water droplets or ice crystals. And in contrast to an updraft, since colder air sinks, a strong downdraft is generated which drags the water droplets down to start raining. This combination of air, water vapor, water droplets, and ice crystals creates clouds. So at this point, we have a massive thunder cloud with plenty of moisture, warmth, and air movements. Zoom into the cloud now. Since ice crystals are light and water is heavy, the crystals are carried to the top of the cloud by the updraft and water to the bottom of the cloud by the downdraft. This causes them to rub against each other, which is the recipe for generating static electricity. Just like rubbing a balloon against our hair, the charges in a cloud separate, with a positive charge on top with the ice crystals, and negative charge at the bottom with the water droplets. At this point, three types of lightning can occur, either between clouds, within clouds, or between clouds and the ground, which is surprisingly the least common type. If there is strong enough separation between the charges, negative charges form a path in the air called a stepped leader, towards positive charges. Similarly, Positive charges can also form a path called an upward streamer towards negative charges. The moment these two paths meet, a circuit is completed and an electrical discharge is released, forming lightning. This is why lightning is considered a static electricity, since it's caused by a difference of charges instead of moving electrons. In terms of cloud to ground lightning, since the negative charges are at the bottom of clouds, positive charges from the ground below get attracted to the surface and start forming upward streamers to connect to the cloud's steps leaders. The simple reason why taller structures get hit by lightning more is just because there is a shorter path for the upward streamers to reach a complete circuit. And there we have it, from the accumulation of moist warm air, updrafts and downdrafts are created, forming massive thunder clouds containing tons of ice crystals and water droplets. As they rub against each other, static electricity is built up to release electrical discharges within microseconds as lightning. And because lightning is 5 times hotter than the surface of the sun, the air it struck very rapidly expands and contracts, creating a crisp boom sound we perceive as thunder. Every 5 seconds between a lightning and a thunder equates to around 1 mile. So, if we hear thunder only 10 seconds after seeing lightning, we should probably head inside since the lightning is only 2 miles or around 3 kilometers away from us. I hope that y'all have learned something interesting today. Thank you for your time and stay hydrated.